We've all read in the newspapers or seen on the television stories about British people being tried in the courts of other countries. And we've heard how many of them complain that they couldn't understand what was being said by the judge, the prosecutor, the defense advocate, or the witnesses. Can you imagine how frightening that must be to sit in the dock and not know what is going on. We have to try and ensure that that doesn't happen here. To an increasing extent, people are coming before the courts in Scotland whose knowledge of English is at best rather imperfect. But until recently, our system for ensuring proper interpretation was rather casual and unstructured. We didn't realize, and I speak as much for myself as for others, how important good interpretation is to the guarantee of a fair trial. As a judge of the European Court of Justice in Luxembourg, I now have to sit and listen to advocates pleading through interpreters. And I have come to realize that interpretation is truly an art. It's not simply a matter of translating word from, for word from one language to another. In many cases, the exact equivalent word or phrase doesn't exist. So the interpreter really has to interpret what's being said so that the person hearing it gets the same sense of what's being said as the person speaking. This is difficult enough in the European court where the advocates are trained speakers and the interpreters have time to read up the case in advance. But in a trial court in Scotland as everywhere else, the unexpected always happens. And the interpreter has to be ready to cope with the unexpected. So they have to be trained. They have to be trained in our court procedure and be prepared to deal with anything that may be said by the judge, the prosecutor, the defense advocate, or any of the witnesses. And for their part, those who sit in court, the judges, the prosecutors, and the defense advocates, have to realize that the interpreters are officers of the court who need their help. Everyone must help the interpreter to do the best they can do to ensure that what's being said is communicated clearly and accurately. The purpose of this video and of the package that goes with it is to give some idea of the difficulties that can arise in court procedure and how they can be dealt with. Your Honour, the first case I wish to call is the case against Iftikhar Chaudhry. This is a case which requires an interpreter. Mm -hmm. And what's the interpreter's name? A Mr. Harnack Monan. Thank you. Mr. Monan? Yes. Could you tell the court your name, please? My name is Harnack Monan. And your address? Care of Glasgow Interpreting Service. Thank you. Mr. Monan, are you a qualified court interpreter? Yes, Your Honour. I have public service interpreting diploma from Institute of Linguist London. Thank you. And have you met and spoken with the accused? Yes, I have. And are you satisfied that you understand each other? Yes. Thank you. Will you take the oath? Yes. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That I will faithfully and truly interpret. That I will faithfully and truly interpret. Between the accused. 
between the accused... The prosecutor and the court. The prosecutor and the court. Thank you. Sorry, I wonder if the accused could be identified, Your Honour. After being sworn, the interpreter should advise the judge what he considers the most convenient seating arrangement. In the interest of efficient interpreting, the judge should authorise the seating arrangement identified. I appear for Mr Chowdhury. He's adhering to his plea of not guilty. Okay. Let's go. Thank you, Your Honour. I have a list of two witnesses in this case, and the first witness I propose to call is Mrs Elizabeth Mary Manson. Okay. The interpreting must be simultaneous, so that the accused is instantly aware of the evidence being given and of the proceedings in court. I swear by Almighty God that I shall tell the truth, that I shall tell the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. Please remain standing. You will be asked some questions. Thank you, Ronald. Are you Elizabeth Mary Manson? Yes. Uh, could you uh, give the court your business address, please? Care of Inverhouse Stores. And can you tell the court your age and occupation? I'm 44 and I'm a store detective with Inverhouse Stores. Were you working there on the 1st of May? Yes. Can you tell the court what happened on that day? A gentleman came into the store around 2 p.m. and wandered up and down the aisles for quite some time. That's what drew my attention to him. He kept wandering around and looking over his shoulder as if he was looking for someone. And he was carrying a leather bag. Now you say he was wandering around the store can you tell us what happened next? He went over to the trouser section and picked up a pair of trousers and took them over to the door and stopped. Um, he glanced over his shoulder for a moment and then he headed back into the store towards the jumpers. He picked up a yellow jumper and then went back to the door. So did he have the jumper and trousers with him? Yes. It was as if he was checking the colour or showing them someone outside. Objection, Your Honour. The witness really shouldn't speculate. This go? Yes, I apologise to my friend. I'll, uh, the interpreter is explaining that the accused solicitor is objecting to the speculative evidence given. Yes, Mrs Manson, if you just listen to my questions and, and, and answer them, it's for the court to draw any inferences from the evidence. Now, what happened when the gentleman got to the door, Mrs Manson? After a second or two, he came back into the store and headed towards the checkout on the left-hand side. He stopped for a moment behind a large display of our brand name goods. And what sort of goods are those? Whiskey and shortbread. And uh, did anything happen when he was at this display? I moved because he had gone out of sight momentarily, but I saw him rummaging in the bag. No. I wonder if you'd look at label number one in this case, please. Is that the bag the man was carrying? Yes. You've signed that label, I think. Yes. What was the man doing with the bag? He, he rummaged around in it uh, with the jumper and the trousers over his arm. And were these garments still on his arm throughout? Yes, but then he shoved the jumper into the bag and glanced over his shoulder again and took out a wallet. He then went over to the checkout and paid for the trousers but not the jumper. Um, and then he started to leave the store. Um, at the door, he met another gentleman, at which point we approached him and asked him to return to the store with us. Was there someone with you? Yes, the store manager. I signaled to him when I first noticed the gentleman. Um, and he was standing near me at the time, you see. and. I also realised that he'd been watching the incident because we both arrived at the door at the same time. And uh, the store manager, is that Cameron Holmes? Yes. Now, did the gentleman return willingly to the store with you? No. When I suggested that he might have something he hadn't paid for, he became very agitated. He was talking 19 to the dozen to the other gentleman and, and I couldn't understand what they were saying. The other gentleman spoke to him in a foreign language. Then the gentleman tried to give the bag to the other gentleman, but he ran away. Um, at that point, we, we asked him to return into the store with us. And did you phone the police? 
we took him into the store, into the manager's office, and phoned the police. I tried to ask him if he got goods that he hadn't paid for, but he kept muttering. And then one of the assistants arrived at the door with a gentleman who had run away earlier, and he said that the gentleman couldn't speak English. Uh, so we asked him if he would wait until the police arrived. What happened when the police arrived? The second person spoke to the gentleman and he became very agitated and pulled out the jumper and we were told he was offering to pay for it. And then the police took them both away. Now, I wonder if I can ask you to look at label number two in this case. Is that your signature on the label, Mrs. Manson? Yes. Is that the uh, jumper that the man produced from the bag? Yes. And uh, the man that you saw that day take the jumper, do you see him in court today? Yes, that's him there. Now, you're pointing uh, to someone in the court. Who are you pointing at, Mrs. Manson? The gentleman on the left-hand side. That's a gentleman sitting in the dock with the blazer on. That's right. Thank you. Now, um, if you just wait a second, Mrs. Manson, my friend may have a few questions to ask you. Thank you. Mrs. Manson... Why was it that this gentleman caught your eye? Because he was wandering about the, the store, looking over his shoulder all, all the time. Could he have been looking for somebody? No, I don't think so. Maybe he was unfamiliar with the layer to the store and was looking for the clothing section? No. When my client had the trousers and jumpers over his arm, you said he went behind a whiskey display? Yes. Was he still within the clothing section? Yes. Was he not in front of the display actually looking at it? Definitely not. Could my client, after dropping the goods, not have picked up the jumpers and the trousers together and with the jumper being covered by the trousers, put the whole thing into the crook of his arm with the bag in his other hand? No, the jumper was quite deliberately shoved into the bag. Later on, when he was paying for the goods, did he not have difficulty in understanding the assistant and, in fact, what was required of him at the checkout? It didn't appear that way to me. Could the jumper itself not have been caught up within the trousers, and when the trousers were handed over, the assistant simply didn't see them? No. Now again, later on, when my client was at the door, was he outside the store or was he inside the door? Just inside the door. Did he have the bag with him? Yes. He kept talking and pointing, as if he was trying to tell us that he got the jumper For in. For goodness sake, Mrs. Manson, would you stick to the point? Was it not the case that my client was so stunned by your aggressive attitude that he was flabbergasted? didn't know what was going on. He tried to call his friend to see what was happening, but he was so frightened, again by your attitude, that his friend ran away. My client had no option but to go into the store with you, otherwise he'd have broken his arm. Excuse me, Your Honour, but I'm having difficulty. Could you please ask the solicitor to slow down? The interpreter should advise the judge if he has any difficulties with the delivery of the evidence. If it is too fast, too slow, too quiet, or if it is ambiguous, colloquial, or technical. Normal business. Definitely not. I have no further questions, Your Honour. Mr. Scott, do you have any further questions? None, thank you, Your Honour. Thank you. Do you wish to retain this witness for any reason? I'd be grateful if this witness could be excused, Your Honour. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Manson. You may go or you can take a seat in the court. Thank you, Your Honour. My next witness is Cameron Holmes. Will you take the oath? I prefer to affirm. Repeat after me. I solemnly, sincerely and truly. I solemnly, sincerely and truly. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. That I will tell the truth. That I will tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please remain standing. You'll be asked some questions. Thank you, Your Honour. Your name is Cameron Holmes. Yes. Can you tell the court your age and occupation, please? 51, and I am store manager in the house stores. Did something happen there on the 1st of May which has resulted in you coming to court today to give evidence? Yes. Would you tell the court what happened, please? I saw a gentleman in the store acting very suspiciously, and the store detective alerted me to him. Would you recognise the man again? Yes. Do you see him in court today? Yes, he's sitting there. Now, who are you pointing to, Mr. Holmes? I'm pointing to the man on the left-hand side with the dark jacket. It's the man in the dock with the dark jacket? Yes. Thank you. What happened after the store detective alerted you to this man? 
I saw him pick up a pair of trousers. Then he went and got a yellow jumper and put it in his bag behind the display unit. He then paid for the trousers. After that, he headed for the door, and we stopped him and took him back to my office. And when you say we, uh, who do you mean, Mr. Holmes? Liz and me. And who's Liz? Mrs. Manson, the store detective who had signaled me. Did anything happen in the office? One of the girls brought a man who knew him and who said he couldn't speak English. Then there was a bit of a stramash. Your Honour, I cannot interpret the word stramash. Please clarify what you mean by stramash, Mr. Holmes. Oh, well, there was a bit of a fuss between them. At that stage, the police arrived. The man then pulled the jumper out of the bag and said something. The other guy said he was offering to pay for the jumper. The police then took them away. Now, I wonder if you'd look at label number two in this case, Mr. Holmes. Is that the jumper to which you refer? Have you signed the label? That's the jumper and that's my signature. Mr. Holmes, when you stopped the man at the door, was he abusive? Don't answer that question. Your Honour, my friend's clearly leading. Let's go. Yes, I, I'm sorry, Your Honour. I'll, I'll rephrase that question. Thank you. I would like, Your Honour. Mr. Holmes, did anything happen as regards the man when you were at the door with him? Yes, when Liz asked him to stop, he became very abusive. He then called over to someone nearby and tried to give him the bag. The other man turned tail. The man had no choice but to follow us. And that was the accused, was it? Yes. No further question, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Mr. Rogue. Thank you, Your Honour. Mr. Holmes, you're telling me that you actually saw my client put the jumper into the bag? Yes. How did this happen? When I was at the display, I'd been working at it. But this display, did it not obstruct your view at the time? Only for a second. Mr. Holmes, could my client not have simply have dropped the garments and picked them up again? Oh, well, there wasn't time. Mr. Holmes, I have to put it to you that there was ample time for my client to have dropped the garments and collected them and put them beside his arm. No, not possible. Can we move on to this incident you say happened at the door? Wasn't my client mind handled by you and your female colleague, Mrs. Manson? I object to that remark. My staff are highly trained. Hmm. You claim he tried to pass the bag to this other person at the door. Wasn't he simply calling for help? No. Did he try to pass the bag to him in the office? No, but he took the jumper from the bag and tried to give that to him. When he was at the till, was there not some confusion there? No. Mr. Holmes, can you honestly say that both articles were not paid for? The jumper was never taken out of the bag until we got to my office. I have no further questions, Your Honour. Let's go. Uh, no, thank you, Your Honour. That concludes the Crown case. Mr. Rogue. Your Honour, could we have break now? I'm tired. Of course, Mr. Monon. Five or ten minutes? Ten minutes would be fine, Your Honour. Thank you. Court will adjourn for ten minutes. It is essential that the interpreter is given the opportunity to have regular adjournments to avoid fatigue. Mm. Mr. Chaudhry, will you go into the witness box, please? The accused has elected to give evidence, and this requires consecutive interpreting. Will you take the oath? Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That I will tell the truth. I will tell the truth. The whole truth. Sarasaj. The whole truth. I'm nothing but the truth. The Nothing but the truth. Thank you. Mr. Rogue. I'm obliged, Your Honour. Your name is Iftikhar Chowdhury. Iftikhar Chowdhury. Hanji. Yes. You are 43 years old and you live at Three Grange Road in Glasgow. Yes. Mr. Chowdhury, are you in employment? No, I do not work. I'm visiting my family here. If I could take you back to the 1st of May, Mr. Chowdhury, were you shopping in Inverhouse stores? 
When evidence is being given by a non-English speaking person, the interpreter may require to take notes to help his memory. Yes, I went there. I wanted to take some presents for my family and uh, I went there to see if I can buy something. While well, you were there, Mr. Cherry, did you steal a jumper? No, I didn't uh, steal. I don't need to uh, steal. What sort of goods were you looking for? Kis kis mein these things? To see, kis mein jaan desi? Main ji, apne chaatche le, apna ek trouser aur le, ek aur le jumper leke, uthe leke jana si. I was I wanted to buy uh, a trouser and a jumper for my uncle. We've heard evidence today that you were acting suspiciously. Do you have anything to say about that? They can they get to see Ute Bada Muskook Chitra Ferresi to see where Kukana Chondo? Naji may Patania Kedam in the Vinde Medakade, Matote, Apneka Prela and Gassi. I don't know why they are saying that. I went there to buy some clothes. Was Mesafer with you? Joseph and Mesafer, you swear? Mazafar ne uthe mainu mainna si te main ta ala to ala dekhda si ke Mazafar mainu mail pave te main dasse kithe cheezan hai te main cheezan khareed la Mazafar was going to see me there i was looking around for Mazafar so that if he can tell me where the things are and i could buy them when you got to the till with your goods mr chaudhry can you tell me what happened then jado tusi till te gaye si us vele ki hoya main te one janda si, the jada mein paise kardan lagga, the o jada bag si mein paise kardan lagga, o bag da pya thalle. I was going towards the till, when I was going to take the money out, my bag fell down. Us to baar thir mein o jada kapde si, o chakke da apni baan de rakhe dite, to phir mein o ja ke tell te, unho na ekudi ni, o kapde de dite, te unho mein paise bhi de dite. Then I picked up those clothes, I put them on my arm, and I went to the till. I gave the clothes to the girl there and the money. She took the money and she put the stuff in the bag and gave it to me. When you were leaving the store, can you recollect what happened at the door? Uh, as I said before, when I was going out, I was going towards Mazafar and then uh, when I was there, the, a woman and a man came and they just got hold of me. Mr. Chowdhury. Did you intend to steal a jumper? Chowdhury, did you see a jumper chori karanda hai rada sir? No, I didn't see a jumper chori karanda hai rada sir. I was a very amir karanda banda, a mahandar banda. I was a very proud of my family. 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 No, I can't even dream of it. I'm a very respectable man. I'm a rich man. And I had the money. I was going to pay the money. I had no intention of it. I'm obliged, Mr. Chowdhury. I have no further questions, you know. Yes, thank you, Honor. Mr. Chowdhury, do you accept that this jumper was in your leather bag as you were leaving the shop? Mr. Chowdhury, do you think that this jumper was in your leather bag as you were leaving the shop? Mr. Chowdhury, do you think that this jumper was in your leather bag as you were leaving the shop? I don't know how much I was going to pay for the money, so I was going to pay for the money. I don't know how it came into my bag. I paid the girl and uh, I, I think she put it in there. I, I didn't know that. Did you see the jumper in the leather bag later on? Did you see the jumper in the leather bag later on? I don't know. उठे जब मैं जफर आया तो उधों में नू इन्हा ने काट के दिखा लिया तो मैं तो उधों भी पे करने नू तैयार सी फिर पैसे दे मैं ना इट वाज व्हेन आई आई सॉ इट फर्स्ट टाइम व्हेन मुजफ्फर केम टू द ऑफिस दे हैड टेकन मी देयर एंड व्हेन ही केम एंड देन आई इट वाज शोन टू मी एंड आई वाज प्रिपेयर
ਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਝੁਲਕਾ ਲਈ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦੱਸੋ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਰਿਚ ਆਦਮੀ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਵੀ ਪੈਸੇ ਪੇ ਕਰਨੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਲੈ ਲੈਣ ਹੁਣ ਵੀ ਲੈ ਲੈਣ why why would i tell lies tell them that i am a rich man i am prepared to pay the money now you can take the money now if you want that child i haven't you just made the whole thing up and you had no intention of buying that jumper ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਮਨ ਘਟਤਾ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਇਰਾਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜੰਪਰ ਖਰੀਦ ਲਾਇਆ ਨਾ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਤਾਂ ਇਦਾਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੱਸਿਆ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਪੈਸੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਕਾਹ ਨੂੰ ਚੋਰੀ ਕਰਨੀ ਸੀ ਆਈ ਟੋਲਡ ਯੂ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆ ਹੈਵ ਲੋਟ ਆਫ ਮਨੀ ਵਾਈ ਵੁਡ ਆਈ ਸਟੇਅ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਸ਼ੋਡਰੀ ਨੋ ਫਰਦਰ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਯੂ ਰੋਨਾ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫਿਸਕਲ ਐਨੀ ਰੀ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਿਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਰੋਕ ਨੋ ਰੀ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਿਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਯੂ ਰੋਨਾ ਮਿਸਟਰ ਸ਼ੋਡਰੀ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਰਿਟਰਨ ਟੂ ਦਿ ਡੋਕ I have no further witnesses your honor that concludes the case for the accused. Thank you. Let's go. Yes, thank you, your honor. Your honor's heard the evidence and obviously it's a question of credibility. I didn't invite you to accept the evidence of the store manager and uh, the store detective. They're trained in such matters to distinguish between uh, ordinary customers and shoplifters and I invite you to uh, convict the accused of the charges libeled. Thank okay. you. Mr. Rogue Thank you, Your Honour. Your Honour is well aware that the court must be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt, not only that my client removed the article in question, but actually intentionally stole the jumper. And it's my submission, Your Honour, that there's clearly not sufficient evidence to show necessary mens rea for... Your Honour, uh, could you please clarify the meanings of the Latin verb? Right, certainly. Mr. Rogue, I wonder if you could rephrase that. Sorry, Your Honour. I would... I would simply say that uh, the evidence does not show the necessary guilty mind on the part of my client to show a deliberate intention to steal. And in the absence of the necessary guilty mind, Your Honour, I would ask you to acquit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will adjourn to consider the evidence. Court stands. Mr. Chaudhry, please stand up. Mr. Chaudhry, I have considered the evidence and find you guilty as charged. Right. You can sit down. The accused has no previous convictions, Your Honour. Thank you. Mr. Rogue? Your Honour has heard the evidence. There's really very little I can add. As the court is aware, Mr. Chaudhry was here visiting relatives, but by court he has a business and uh, it generates uh, a reasonable income for Mr. Chaudhry. I would ask Your Honour, to bear in mind that Mr. Chaudhry has no previous convictions and this is the first time he's found himself in, in difficulty with the courts. And with that in mind, I would suggest this is a case which Your Honour could deal with in a lenient manner. If it is Your Honour's intention to impose a fine, that could be paid within uh, seven days. Stand up, please, Mr. Chaudhry. You will be fined £150, payable in seven days. Mr. Chaudhry, you've been fined £150, payable within seven days. You're free to go. I'm obliged, Your Honour. Mr. Moran, thank you for your assistance. That completes your honour's court for today. Thank you. It is vital to remember that the interpreter, who is an essential officer of the court, provides the only channel of communication for a non-English speaking party in the criminal justice system. As is clear from the video, an interpreter is required in court in two situations. One, uh, for or a foreign witness who can't speak English and two uh, for an accused who can't speak English whether the accused is a witness or not where an accused does not speak English or does not speak it well enough an interpreter must be provided to ensure that the accused fully understands what is happening at all stages of the proceedings. Under our law, it is the duty of the court to provide an interpreter. And in a case in 1942, the appeal court held uh, that a magistrate had neglected his judicial duty in failing to ensure that an interpreter was provided in a trial involving three Polish soldiers whose command of the English language was either non-existent or very poor. And I would like to quote from what Lord Fleming said uh, in giving a judgment in that case. And what he said was this, 
It is essential that the proper procedure, in cases where there is any doubt about the ability of the accused to speak or understand the English language, should be carefully followed. In such cases, a sworn interpreter must be employed to ensure that the accused understands the charge against him and the evidence given by the witnesses. The interpreter is not to be regarded as being a representative either of the prosecution or of the defence. He is an official of the court and ought to be an independent person. Uh, and as the video shows, the uh, interpreter, being an officer of the court, requires to take an oath, and that is why he was sworn. Now, it must also be noted that the interpreter must be a competent interpreter. And again, the video brings this out, because at the outset, the justice questioned the interpreter in order to satisfy herself that the interpreter and the accused understood uh, one another. This is important, and in another case in the appeal court in 1993, it transpired that difficulties had occurred uh, during the trial in the court below because the official interpreter was not properly qualified in the language of the accused, and questions had arisen as to whether she was interpreting the proceedings properly. Now that is something which should not happen. Fortunately, over recent years, many interpreters have acquired the Diploma in Public Service Interpreting, which involves interpreting in courts, among other things. And this is a great advantage uh, to the court because apart from anything else, it enables the court to be satisfied that a particular interpreter is properly qualified. It is a fundamental rule of our law that justice must not only be done, but must be seen to be done. And there will be a failure of justice if an accused uh, goes to trial uh, without being able, because of language difficulties, to fully understand uh, what is happening. This uh, video uh, appears to me to be a very useful uh, tool, uh, and it will be of great assistance to judges, to practitioners, and others who are involved in any way uh, in the operation of the criminal justice system in this country, and I'm happy to commend it uh, to those to whom it will undoubtedly be of such assistance.